Today we're going to talk about key loggers. There's two main varieties of key loggers. There's a hardware key logger that's plugged in between your keyboard and your computer, and that is potentially detectable just by looking at the cable. And then there's the software key logger, which is a little more difficult to detect. And in many cases, you're probably not going to notice either one of them, especially if they're more advanced. So this is not to illustrate how to detect key loggers because that can be very difficult. It's simply to know what you're up against if you think there may be a key logger involved or if you were to go use some computer, an untrusted machine that might be in you know, some internet cafe, just to realize ways that you can uh, protect yourself. So let's get right down to it. The first one is called Hooker. This is an example key logger. It's very basic. It's not very advanced at all, but it does give us a good example of, of how it works. So first off, let's say if you pretend over here on the right screen, I was typing in my username and password. You can see over in the log of Hooker, it's shown that there's my username and password. So if you were logging into your browser and a key logger was running, whoever was getting those logs would see your username and password. So as you can see, that's not something you'd want to have happen. You can change some of the settings in here, and I'll just go briefly through the settings they have. For instance, monitoring the clipboard, I copied the username and password, it then spit out over here the clipboard username and then in the clipboard the password. Anyway, some of the settings are a little bit concerning. So in addition to monitoring clipboard, it can periodically save a log and notice here, in addition to saving it to a file, can send an email, you can configure that. And even if you were able to detect it and delete the logs on your computer, they might still have the logs being sent off somewhere else kind of like a video surveillance system that has its logs or its videos stored somewhere else. So that's something to be aware of that key loggers don't always just store locally. Okay, so that's the first key logger and that's just the general idea. You can see this process running. So if we were to open up Process Explorer and look for Hooker and sure enough, we find it there. So if you knew what you were looking for, you'd, you'd be able to detect it without too much work, but these can very easily be named something generic that you wouldn't recognize as a key logger. So even if the process were displayed, it can be hard to recognize it. And then of course, there are ways to hide the process from even showing up. The next one is called Pi Keylogger, and it was written because the developer couldn't find one that had available source code. It is more, he sees it more as a backup system than a key logger. He said it doesn't make any explicit attempts to hide, but it also doesn't advertise itself. So uh, one thing he does note here that, so there are key logger detectors. Those are uh, pieces of software that can see if something's actively writing to disk or hooking up to well-known APIs. So you can, there are ways of detecting a keylogger, but then of course there's also ways to to hide yourself. So a keylogger author and a detector author are kind of going back and forth in a little battle to see who can hide or detect better than the other. So this one is still fairly basic, but it does have some more features other than hooker. So I've been running it here, and let's say I wanted to log in to my Ingdirect account. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now you may think, ah, this isn't logging the keyboard, the keystroke, since it uses the mouse login, so we've snuck through it. And there's another example. There's a utility called Neo's Safe Keys. And the way this works is that you use your mouse. So let's say we're going to type our secret password, and then you highlight it and drag it over and then drop it in there. So you can see I've never touched the keyboard in order to get those characters into here and that would successfully get past the first one we saw, Hooker, but as you'll see in a moment, PyKeyLogger still gets it just fine. The results, 
there's three different logs that are kept. There's the detailed log, and that's the one that's most similar to the hooker screen that we saw. So what this does, it has a timestamp, and it shows you kind of a running tally of the keystrokes that have been typed, and it's very similar to what we saw before with hooker. The timed screenshots, let's see if we've taken some. So this just shows the window at periodic times. Those two alone don't really beat, you know, for instance, the, the Neo save keys or the indirect login. However, this last one, I'm afraid, does completely. So what this does is it creates a small screenshot around where you've clicked. And if you look at this, where the mouse is, the center there, there's one, and then you can see it moves over. So the center is now on two. So you can tell where the user clicked just based on the center of the screen. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What you would see in the Neo safe keys, there's S, E, you can even see it's that depressed as well as showing the center, C, R, E, T. So again, even though we didn't type anything in the keyboard, you can still see what the text was. There is some good news. KeyPass is a password safe, so it's a place, a piece of software that you can store your passwords and use it to generate them and use a different password for every site, which I highly recommend. And KeyPass has the very useful feature that the master key dialog, so there's a master password, is shown on a secure desktop, or it can be shown. And if you're using KeyPass, please enable this feature. So the secure desktop keeps virtually no key loggers, allows no key loggers to have access to those keys. There is also another point. I spoke recently about two-factor authentication. Dropbox has now enabled that for their system and logins. And as we discussed in the previous video, Google has that for their account. If you have two-factor authentication, even if you're on a machine with a key logger and they successfully get your Google password, while of course this is not ideal, the secondary token, the token that you get from your cell phone is constantly changing. It's a time-based token. That's, and so by having a changing token, someone with your password alone would still not be able to get into your account. So while it's not ideal that they've gotten your password through their keylogger, they still wouldn't be able to get into the account because of the two-factor authentication. Overall summary, be careful of keyloggers. At least you know how they work now and have some idea of what to look for. Even though you have things like on-screen keyboards, they're not going to protect against keyloggers that take screenshots of your clicks. Uh, so you need to be aware of the limitations of kind of working around key loggers. Hopefully that's been helpful and stay safe.